Today on Questions Answered, we're talking about wheel and tire size. Most importantly, we're talking about 700C versus 650B, or 29 versus 27.5, which are the most common wheel and tire sizes. And the first question is, what do those numbers mean? And the answer goes back to the history of wheel and tire sizing, and it's a very convoluted history, it's very confusing, and the most confusing part is those numbers don't really refer to a specific size. Um, there was a time in bicycle history where basically every manufacturer had their own version of wheel and tire size. 700C and 650B both come from France. And in France, they were using a system where they would describe the overall wheel and tire diameter roughly in millimeters. And for 700C, that was about 700 millimeters, wheel and tire. And C referred to the tire width, which was a standard. Um, so the actual bead seat diameter or the actual wheel diameter and the diameter of the bead of the tire that fits in there is 622 millimeters. 650B, roughly 650 millimeters wheel and tire diameter, actual bead seat diameter, 584 millimeters. And so that's what that refers to. And uh, the history of 700C is that it uh, was developed in France as uh, a road wheel size standard. And it has become the predominant road standard across, uh, you know, basically every manufacturer that makes a road bike, it's a 700C road bike. And uh, 650B, originally developed in France for randonneering, a little bit more mixed terrain riding with a wider tire and higher volume tire and a smaller wheel diameter, um, has kind of come back into popularity for gravel and hybrids and uh, types of riding that uh, require a slightly larger tire. So what's the advantage of a 700C wheel and tire combination? Well, the big one is rolling speed. With a larger diameter wheel and tire, the bike rolls faster and maintains speed more easily. It also has the ability to roll over larger bumps without losing speed compared to a smaller diameter wheel and tire. So what are the disadvantages to 700C? Well, the primary disadvantage is that a larger wheel and tire is gonna be slightly heavier. The other disadvantage is that on smaller frames, the wheels take up a lot more space. So smaller riders can have issues with toe overlap in the front or issues with having a geometry that's easy to ride. So what are the advantages of 650B? The primary advantage is that if you take that smaller diameter 650B rim and then put a wider tire on it so that the outside diameter of that tire matches a 700C wheel and tire combination, what you end up with is a similar rolling speed with more tire volume. So that equates to a smoother ride and better grip. So one example would be the Priority Continuum Onyx and the Priority 600. The Continuum Onyx uses 700C by 32 millimeter tires for pretty good rolling speed on smooth terrain. And then the Priority 600 uses 650 by 50 millimeter tires. And those offer better bump absorption on rougher terrain while having a similar outside tire diameter. So what's the downside of 650B? Despite having the same outside tire diameter as a 700C wheel, there is an efficiency compromise. With a larger volume tire, you do sacrifice a little bit of rolling speed. Similarly, if you shrink that tire down so that you're using the same tire width as a comparable 700C rim and tire setup, then it just won't roll as fast or roll over bumps as easily as the larger diameter wheel and tire. The next question is, do mountain bike wheels use the same standards? And the answer is yes. A 700C rim is actually the same bead seat diameter as a 29 inch mountain bike rim. Similarly, a 650B road wheel is the same bead seat diameter as a 27.5 inch mountain bike rim. Although mountain bike rims are generally wider to fit a wider tire. So could you use mountain bike tires on a road wheel or road tires on a mountain bike wheel? The answer is sort of the actual bead diameter is the same, so you could take a mountain bike tire, a 29er mountain bike tire, and install it on a road rim, but it wouldn't really work that great because uh, road rims are narrower, so it's gonna change the shape of that mountain bike tire 
uh, and, and it won't really ride correctly. Um, similarly, if you try and put a road tire on a mountain bike rim, the width difference is usually gonna be so extreme that the road tire may not even fully inflate or seat properly, even though it's the right diameter. Why would you use a 29er or a 27.5 inch mountain bike wheel and tire? A 29 inch wheel and tire combination, similarly to the 700C comparison in road, is that the larger diameter gives you the ability to roll faster, especially over bumps and rough terrain. That larger diameter wheel just gets over bumps more easily. And the 27 and a half inch wheel doesn't get over bumps quite as easily, but a 27 and a half inch wheel and tire combination is a lot lighter than a 29er. So that makes it a lot more maneuverable. And that means for riders looking for a bike that's a bit more playful feeling and easier to change direction on, or smaller riders that want to make sure they get a bike that's, uh, that fits well or is easier for them to maneuver, then a 27 and a half inch wheel is going to be a better choice. A lot of riders for certain disciplines of mountain biking are using mixed wheel setups these days, which means a 29er up front and a 27 and a half inch wheel in the back. And what that gives you is the fast rolling speed of the 29er while giving you better maneuverability and better clearance uh, between your body and the tire in the back. Some great examples would be all of our off-road touring bikes, our adventure line, the 680X and the 600X before that, use 29 inch wheels. And that's because those bikes are designed to roll fast over varied terrain and keep their speed really well. And the Priority Vanth uses a mixed wheel size setup with a 29er up front and a 27 and a half inch wheel in back for carrying speed on rough terrain while still giving you the ability to maneuver on whatever kind of trails you wanna ride. The Priority Sauce and Hot Sauce uses dual 27 and a half inch wheels and tires because it makes the bike light and really playful feeling. Are there any other notable wheel and tire sizes out there? Absolutely. 26 inch wheels and tires have been the choice for beach cruisers for nearly a century and uh, were originally the choice for mountain bikes because mountain bikes came from beach cruisers originally from clunkers. And 26 inch wheels are, are still present on some commuter bikes and some cargo bikes that need a bit more clearance. So they use a smaller tire. Other notable tire sizes are 24 inch wheels, which are not super common, but can be used on some cargo bikes, kids bikes, and some larger BMX bikes. 20 inch wheels, the most popular choice for BMX bikes, also becoming a really popular choice for compact cargo bikes or compact commuter bikes because they offer a great form factor and pretty decent performance for the size. They're also a really common choice on folding bikes like the Priority Folder. 16 inch wheels are a common size for kids bikes, for three to five year olds, and are also used on some folding bikes that uh, really prize a small form factor. Beyond that, 12 inch wheels you'll find on much smaller kids bikes and even 10 inch wheels on some balance bikes. And then on the other end of the spectrum, 36 inch wheels have been experimented with a bit for mountain bikes, especially for larger people. And 32 inch wheels are sort of entering the conversation as a larger alternative to 29 inch wheels for their rolling ability um, and have appeared at some bike shows in recent memory. Wheel and tire size has a massive impact on the ride feel and performance of a bike. So it's really important to take that into consideration when you're shopping for a new bike. If you have any questions about what wheel and tire size is right for your application or any questions about anything at all, post it in the comments and we'll get to it in a future video. Thanks for watching.